Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 12, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. DDA today took a look at a new to him tool, XLM Macro Deobfuscator. This tool allows you to, as the name implies, deobfuscate XLM or XL4 macros by actually implementing sort of an emulator for these XL4 macros and executing a limited subset of their functionality, helping you with deobfuscating them without actually executing any sort of of the malicious code. So thanks to Dissect Malware for making this tool available for free on GitHub. And then I did a quick walkthrough through a LinkedIn phishing attempt. And now I don't see a lot of phishing attempts coming in via LinkedIn. Typically they come in from a compromised account that's then being used to essentially spam their connections. A couple of interesting things about this was that first of all, the directory with the original phishing kit was exposed. So that allowed me to download the phishing kit and then also to take a look at the logs that actually logged who fell for the phish. Now, didn't log any email address and passwords. Uh, they're being sent to the attacker's email address. But with the logs, I was sort of able to identify who the likely author of this phishing attack is by looking at the first IP that sort of consistently shows up in these logs. The phishing site also moved between uh, different sites as they were shut down. And since they are using an office uh, one share document uh, to actually uh, trick the people uh, to direct them uh, to the fish. You can look at the revisions of the document to sort of find earlier versions of the fish. So uh, just uh, create a little video to sort of document uh, how this all worked. And then we got a new Thunderbolt attack, Thunder Spy, it's named, and well, it's sort of a, an upgrade to older Thunderbolt attacks that used external connected devices to the Thunderbolt interface. Now, the older attacks pretty much no longer work uh, because Thunderbolt chipsets in their firmware implemented uh, security features that don't allow access to Thunderbolt unless the system is fully booted up. So what this newer attack does essentially to replace the firmware in these Thunderbolt controllers with one that basically has the firmware security turned off. Now, all of these Thunderbolt attacks, of course, do require that an attacker has physical access to the device. The older Thunderbolt attacks was pretty easy. The only thing the attacker had to do was connect a Thunderbolt device to the system. For this Thunder Spy attack, the attacker actually has to open up the laptop, then connect a basically a firmware flasher uh, to the Thunderbolt chip uh, with sort of a little uh, clamp they built uh, to make that easier and faster. And that's then being used uh, to flash the firmware. Of course, once the firmware is flashed, there's really no evidence. And, and as long as uh, the case is properly closed. Now they demonstrated on the Lenovo laptop, uh, essentially, any laptop that was uh, produced any time before 2019 is vulnerable to this Apple laptops included. Not sure where exactly this Thunderbolt uh, chip is located on the Apple logic board. Uh, if it's not quite as exposed, maybe it's a little bit harder uh, to get to it. Uh, little tip from back in the day when I still used to travel, uh, just cover the screws uh, to your laptop a case like the laptop undersides usually where that you have to remove uh, with some uh, glitter nail polish and take pictures of that that should at least give you some evidence if someone tampered with your laptop even though of course uh, it's hard to protect yourself from that unless you always keep your laptop with you and yeah, the glitter nail polish itself sometimes uh, tends to fall off. Uh, so you have to cover it uh, with some tape or in my case, I usually have sort of a little snap on case uh, covering and protecting my laptop anyway. And uh, that sort of makes accidental damage to this uh, less likely. 
And if you're using the commercial bulletin software, the bulletin time to patch a critical vulnerability has been patched in the bulletin. Now, not a lot of details available at this point. And since it's commercial software, you can't easily download the code and diff it. It's probably already being done, but uh, have to jump through a couple of hoops to get access to the code. Charles Fall, who discovered the vulnerability, announced that he will provide details about the vulnerability at the SSTIC conference next month. So you have a week or so probably to patch. Well, and this is it for today. Remember also this week we have, well, Christmas uh, Net Wars starts sort of a special holiday themed uh, challenge that starts on Thursday and you may already sign up for it and reserve yourself a space. So that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.